I am Alice Ammerman. I'm in the Department of Nutrition and the Gilling School of Global Health, Public Health, also, also direct the Center for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention. Uh, I'm going to try to capture 30 years of dissemination and implementation research. Fortunately, I only have five minutes. Lucky for you. Um, this all actually started with my dissertation. And literally, I think I could say, with the help of a cast of thousands, if we counted all of our patients, community partners, and researchers, several of whom are in the room here. So the challenge here, I think in most statistics, you'll find that heart disease ranks either number two, number one or two in terms of leading causes of death. Unfortunately, it's highly correlated to poverty. Um, there are a few affordable options for preventive health care. Um, we are particularly in a difficult place here. The, if you look at the map, that's the stroke belt, where are very high rates of cardiovascular disease. And down on the coast is considered the buckle of the stroke belt. The, the cardiovascular rates are even higher. Uh, but most, physician, most patients see their physicians about four times a year, so that does offer an opportunity. But most doctors don't get a lot of training in nutrition and don't have a lot of time to spend on that during an average clinic visit. But there is an opportunity um, to create a, a simple counseling tool that can be adapted for the Mediterranean diet. I know we change up diets on you right and left. It seems like there's a new thing to eat every other day. But the Mediterranean diet is really catching a lot of um, fire in the terms of, of beneficial effects on a lot of health-related issues. And so we developed a simple tool that makes it quick and easy to assess diet, provides sort of foolproof proof counseling tips so you don't have to keep up with the latest diet. This, our tools kind of help you do that. Um, and it's culturally relevant for the southern diet. Um, in fact, we've adapted barbecue recipes to feature southern vegetables with just a little bit of pork, and we're working on hush puppies now as our next. <laughs> um, so the simple little strategy here, if you can see it, is that this is a column system, and I think I could walk. Um, so this column system is doing well. We encourage providers to start there and say, okay, So rather than calculating, trying to figure it all out, the physician or whoever can just look quickly down that list. And then you can pick out, let's say this person is not eating many vegetables. And then this is directly linked to some counseling tips. So it's kind of like talking from a slideshow where it tells you what information to convey. So in terms of our reach and impact um, over this 30-year period, we've um, worked with about 30 community health centers, mostly federally qualified health centers, uh, 50 health departments, 80 African-American churches. And in terms of the people, so we started with physicians, but now we work with nurses, health educators. Interesting parallel with community health workers and physicians is that both have great respect in, among the community. People know them um, and respect their advice, but neither of them tend to have a lot of background and training in nutrition. So with a tool like this, that can be overcome. Oh, we've calculated about $20 million in funding. If you put all things together, this strategy has been adapted for other things like childcare and other settings to be able to kind of assess the eating patterns and then um, respond to them. Some of the outcomes, we've seen improvements, significant improvements in diet and physical activity, uh, blood pressure, serum cholesterol, BMI, carotenoids, which give an assessment of fruit and vegetable intake. And we've been testing many different delivery modalities, and this is kind of our next phase of dissemination. We've adapted what was a paper and pencil version that I did hand drawings myself, which was pretty crude <laughs> 30 years ago. Um, and now we're using computer-based methods that can be more easily disseminated. So it's a constant trade-off between efficiency, a number of you have talked about sort of in-person versus technology and which way works better, which has more impact. So we're testing a lot of those things, trying to find the right mix of feasibility and cost effectiveness, but also having an impact on patient outcomes.